Reserve Season 2. This is what actually happened between Ram, Roswell, and Amelia. Give it to me, any news. With everything finally starting to come together now, it makes sense that the anime has to be very concise with the way they show it. But there's so many moving pieces and different character arcs going on at the same time that I wouldn't be surprised if some of the stuff we saw in this episode may have come off as a little confusing. I mean, if the conversation between Ram and Roswell didn't make much sense to you, well, that's because the entirety of their vow wasn't properly explained. Or, I bet you didn't realize that Roswell went to Amelia with the intent of getting her to attack him. So, it's details really? like that that we'll cover as we go through everything the anime excluded from the novels. He wanted to provoke Amelia? And then what? That creates an excuse for Roswell to fuck her up? What? Let's begin. Episode 46, A Howling Reunion. Covering the last few chapters of Volume 14 of the Light Novel. Starting things off with the preparations to leave Sanctuary, there was a little bit more to Subaru's conversation with Ram. You see, while Garfield and Otto were away retrieving the shield from Ryuzu's cabin, oh, it gave Subaru that's what they were, the gauntlets. a chance to explain to Ram what was happening. As you'd expect, she was understandably confused by Subaru's sudden decision to leave. I mean, to her, he was pretty much abandoning Amelia during a very crucial moment. So it only made sense that her demeanor was a bit more harsh than usual. That being said, it's not like Subaru would have minded explaining every little detail behind his actions. It's just that there wasn't enough time to do it. So instead he could only say that it was all to save Petra and Frederica. As valid of a reason as this was, there was still this very visible expression of doubt stuck on Ram's face. She couldn't seem to believe that that was reason enough for him to leave Amelia. But even if that was how she felt, Subaru still trusted that Ram would fulfill her role the same way that everyone else was trying to. Sure, this was definitely a huge gamble to make, but that was all part of what he signed up for. Straight bet! Now, the reason the villagers were so easily able to accept Subaru's departure was because he wasn't the one that took responsibility for their liberation. No, that burden fell to a certain half-elf. Remember, it had only been a day or so since Amelia had made the declaration that she was going to free them. That's the craziest shit in Read Zero. Because of the different loops that goes on and because of the weeks on weeks on weeks that we watched the anime episode, like, it's only been like fucking a day and a half or something, but to us it's feel like fucking couple weeks. So, it was that recent memory that allowed them to have so much faith in her. As Subaru was about to end the conversation with one final word of warning, the villagers instead cut him off before he could finish. They limit. seemed to already know that he was about to talk about waiting to the limit for something. The limit. We don't exactly know what they're referring to here, but it does make it seem like the villagers will be playing a role in helping Amelia take care of things in Sanctuary. They got a different plan! Anyway, after Amelia heard that Subaru had left her, it was because she knew he loved her that she was only a little annoyed by it. Because she knew that Subaru cared for her the most out of anyone. Not only did it show that he didn't doubt her success, but it also helped her to understand that there was someone out there who needed his help more than she did. It was a display of trust that only she was capable of recognizing. Yeah, and this time, she did not get all crazy yandere mode and just bail on us, right? Because this time, a letter wasn't given to her and then stolen by Roswell. This time, it's post-kiss buff, even if we're gone, Amelia will understand. It was a display of trust that only she was capable of recognizing. Now, when Ram knelt down to make her request to Amelia, this wasn't just a simple display of courtesy. No. To kneel before another person was what the people of this world considered to be the greatest show of respect. Which is... I mean, you know how it looked bad on us when we went into the royal, uh, like, in this fucking castle? Along with Priscilla and showed up beside her and made a fool of ourselves? Yulia's doing this shit, I guess it's a sign of respect, but it's for a different faction. I still don't know what the fuck is going on with Julius and fucking Kararagi and Anastasia. Like, why is he with them? Not still not explained yet, but, like, this doesn't matter? Like, Emilia just getting one need by Julius and kissing her. I know it's just, like, a show of respect, but is this not, like, disrespectful, look bad on fucking Anastasia's faction? It was the highest level of formality only given to those deserving of the utmost admiration. That's right. So, this was meant to show Emilia just how sincere she was. As we saw, Ram was done being the tool that Roswell wanted her to be. It was a way of living that she simply couldn't abide by anymore. Yeah, it's looking like, you know, Ram was just, uh... Ram was like Roswell's tool the entire time. But even she can now recognize that this pervert clown is getting off the sauce. Like, he's getting lost in the sauce, sorry. 
And now she's like, please help save Roswell from his delusions. Resulting in her asking Amelia to break Roswell's obsession with the book. But after she did, Amelia proceeded to ask if Roswell would even be okay with that. It was a question to which Ram knew the answer was he most certainly wouldn't be. But what she also knew was that this was the only way her feelings would ever get through to him. So even if she was well aware that without the book, Roswell would panic and lose his will to live, standing before her right now was an opportunity to finally change the way of life he's been so eternally bound by. A chance that she wasn't going to allow to slip away from her. She must really love Roswell so much. Even if Roswell chases Echidna. But I think that Ram is simply just groomed and manipulated just like fucking everyone else back in the day. But you can now blame Echidna for it because Echidna groomed Roswell, Bieko, and Ryuzu. And now Roswell's grooming Ram. It turned into this plea for help that ended up shaking Amelia to her very core. Not because she understood what exactly Ram was asking of her, but instead because this was the first time that Ram had thought to depend on anyone other than herself. Yeah, and she actually said, until now, you were fucking useless, I had no hope for you, but things have changed now. One knee, please. So, what Amelia felt in this moment was nothing but a single sense of duty. One that filled her chest with a burning intensity so strong that even her hands were starting to tremble. Now, one thing to note about Roswell's initial appearance is that he was a bit more hostile than what we saw in the anime. Okay. You see, after Amelia mentioned how she couldn't accept his hollow words of congratulations, Roswell went on to explicitly state that that's not what they were meant to be. He Name. <laughs> Even an heir like he was able to understand my congratulations just for not words of goodwill. Yeah, it's just like fucking the most passive-aggressive dialogue, just complimenting shitting on each other. He was happy that Amelia was able to understand that it was sarcasm. Even so, Amelia was still confused as to what his intent was. His emotions were coming off a bit too mixed for her to figure out what he wanted. Kind of like half of it was sorrow and the other half was joy. Yeah! Denoted by his eyes. Heterochromia. Hector and Roswell. Who knows if they're both in one, or if this is just a red herring, there's nothing about it, and Roswell is just a bipolar motherfucker after years of selective breeding. I don't know! What she could easily tell though was that Roswell was suffering. It was obvious the answer he was hoping to find by coming here wasn't the one he was currently receiving. So, when he tried to instill doubt in- Like, why does he talk with one eye open sometimes? And sometimes he's just super fucking mad and has both eyes open. Maybe it's not an important, like, detail, but like... I don't know, he just sometimes just holds the fucking left gold eye open while yapping. He tried to instill doubt into Amelia much like how he tried to do with Garfield. There was something about the way he said his scornful remarks that made Amelia feel as if they weren't even meant for her. It was almost as if they were complaints directed towards himself. Perhaps all that stuff about Subaru only being interested in the ideal version of the woman he loved was actually nothing more than Roswell just projecting his own feelings. Whatever it was though, the truth of the matter was that Roswell was wrong. If Subaru truly was like Roswell and only had affection for the ideal version of Amelia, then that Amelia would never have been able to make it past the trial at all. Mm -hmm. She would still be crying in the tomb at the sight of an incomprehensible past. But because that wasn't what had happened, Amelia was instead able to be standing here denying everything that Roswell was saying, eventually leading to the conclusion that she'd turn all the lies into wishes. It was after she said this that Roswell took more than a few moments to comprehend the fact that he'd just been denied. And it was as he did that Amelia came to a sudden realization. She began to think that perhaps Roswell had come here to make her do something terrible. Yeah, like hit him, and then what? Does Roswell then have a reason to hit back? With the way he'd been acting so far, it wasn't too far-fetched to think that that was the reason for his visit. Just taunting? In fact, it was the only plausible reason that she could think of. Based on everything she'd seen and heard, it was almost like he'd been trying to aggravate her to the point that she'd lash out at him. So, when she directly asked him if that was the case, the only thing that Roswell said in response was that he happened to dislike pain. It was a confusing answer to the question she had given, but it wasn't- Man. Can you monkeys just fucking pay attention to the fucking video? Why the fuck would you even come up with this dumbass fucking theory right now while watching the cut content? Guys, what if Garfield loves Rem instead of Ram, but because Rem can't be remembered, Garfield's love was directed to Ram since they're identical? What would even fucking make you think of that at this fucking moment? You think that Garfield loves Ram, but it's actually Rem? Think about the fucking personality difference, bro. 
There's like the exact fucking opposite. Listen, I don't like moderating because I think that giving these kind of powers to different fucking people is only going to be abused and learn and, and, and turn to more downfall. But like I let you motherfuckers do most whatever you want for the most times, but it is like unreal how much of these fucking retards show up and they just want their own fucking attention, having their own private conversations. Motherfucker, go fucking make a post on the subreddit. Go talk with your fucking imaginary friends on Discord. Fucking pay attention to the fucking video we're watching. What are you fucking doing? Nothing. Fucking idiot. Account created on September 25th, following since September 25th. Yeah, deserve, you deserve a fucking two-week ban for this. Get the fuck out of here. So fucking annoying, these retards. I'm gonna fucking behave themselves. So I have to gotta correct your dumb asses. Listen, I'd like to treat you motherfuckers like actual fucking grown-ups with your own level of independence to do whatever you want. But like, this is what happens when we don't have a fucking person just moderating. Monkeys will just do whatever they want and it just changes the entire fucking directions of the chat. Fucking stupid. And one that went to deny what she was inferring leaving Amelia with no choice but to conclude that Roswell had come here to be punished. As for why he wanted that, well, that's something we only figure out after Amelia went to face her unknowable present. He's just a kinky fucking unk, bro. Roswell's a fucking... Roswell's a freaky-ass motherfucker. ...or why he wanted that. Well, that's something we only figure out after Amelia went to face her unknowable present. You see, Roswell's conversation with Ram after she had left pretty much went to confirm Amelia's suspicion. She was correct in assuming that Roswell wanted her to hurt him. But it wasn't because he wanted to be punished. <laughs> what is it? He just likes the pain? No. The only reason he was being Provoke? so provoking was because that's what the book had told him to do. <laughs> that's it? <laughs> okay. I thought he was trying to figure out a reason to, like, fucking hit back. The book is telling him. Alright, well, shit. I mean, the book... I like how Roswell's crazy enough to throw away his own life in these different timelines, fully aware that he himself in that timeline will not be the one in a different one, right? That I can respect, the pure insanity, but sometimes him just listening to the book without critical thinking just because the book told him so, I don't know, it just makes him kind of retarded, does it not? Had Amelia lashed out at him like the book had predicted, then Roswell would have won his bet with Subaru right there. Really? Like, Emilio lashes out, and everything just breaks apart? I mean, who knows what the next 10 steps are going to be after, you know, taunting Amelia and Emilia lashes out. I, I would like to figure that out. And it, it is a grimoire, right? It tells the fucking future, so sometimes you don't have to really critically think. You just listen to it. But I think that and there's a lot of these different shows, even like Dune, right, where the whole point beside of being like don't listen to charismatic people that are then going to lead the people into like a darker future than what is currently exists but about like fate destiny simply having this like knowledge of the future simply having this prescience power limits humanity as now you're just following the script rather than trying to determine what is yours and that is kind of like the difference between these two but because amelia had been influenced by ram prior to the conversation the game still continued with Roswell heading towards defeat. Regardless of what the situation was though, Roswell still intended to do everything in his power to fulfill the words written in his book. I wonder what would happen if the book said, listen to Subaru. Whoa, I don't know, would the book ever say that? The book's like, Roswell? Alright, maybe we should just listen to Subaru. He's cooking. I don't think the book would ever say that. So that meant taking advantage of Garfield's departure from Sanctuary. Because he and the others had left, it presented Roswell with the opportunity to capitalize on a massive hole in their defense. A chance to shift the tides that he also decided to tell Ram about. Mm-hmm. Make it snow, baby. Uh, somehow, with the core Ryuzu shit, mana, great snow falls down, great rabbit shows up, right? So that things get fucked up here while we're at the mansion. That is so troll. <laughs> that is... Wait, what did he say last time during the straight bet? During the straight bet, didn't he say like, Alright, I'll give you some time before the snow like falls down. Like five days or something? I think I remember a passage like that during straight bet. Has it been that enough time? Or is he going back on his word? And he's like, three days? Okay, has it been three days or not? I don't know. 
is this third day? Or is Razzle being a cheeky motherfucker and realizing, oh shit, he's gonna win. <laughs> no, I gotta make the snowfall right now. I can't wait like another day or two. Although he didn't explicitly say what he was going to do. The very fact he still trusted her enough to tell her was more than enough to fill Ram with immense feelings of happiness. I mean, up until now, the commands he gave her were quite literally what she lived for. But it had gotten to the point where she just couldn't ignore how hollow it all felt. That's why this time she couldn't obey his order to wait for Amelia. Even if his concern for her, Subaru, and everyone else did in fact seem to be genuine. The place it was coming from was far too twisted for Ram to accept anymore. It was a conclusion she was influenced into by her conversation with Otto. While the flashback did show Ram to be quite cooperative from the get-go, it took quite a bit more convincing in the novels to get her to even listen. There was even a point where she felt the need to threaten Otto with her wand. Not because he was a physically intimidating individual, but more so because she could tell that he had plenty of tricks up his sleeve. Yeah. The fact that he had been so easily able to catch her off guard was more than enough to prove that. <laughs> Is he just so insignificant that he can sneak up and surprised Ram or is he a master assassin schemer? The man who was also not part, he was the unknown variable in Rosal's grimoire. Is Otto. <laughs> Otto is Pandora confirmed. So Ram felt it was important to overwhelm Otto by any means necessary. Once she saw that he wasn't even flinching though, that's when Ram decided it wouldn't hurt to hear what he had to say. She could always determine whether or not to use her wand on him after the negotiations were done. By the time it was over, the core factor that had managed to influence her was Otto's display of determination. There was something about his stupidly blunt approach of exposing their entire plan that made her appreciate his efforts. Part of which led her to realize that Otto was acting on his own. What okay. the anime didn't tell us was that none of this conversation was directed by the orders of Subaru. It was a plan that Otto had come up with all by himself. Okay. So Ram couldn't help but respect his courageous yet idiotic maneuver. There's nothing really going on here, right? Otto is just a normal person. He's so insignificant. He was left out in a book. He's strategizing and he's making an impact. And there's nothing beyond that. He is a good friend that may one day die because he's close to Subaru. And how can Tape make the suffering get worse? Kill this motherfucker and make it irreversible. Just like the Rem forgotten thing. Switching back to the present now, there was a certain feeling of joy that came when Ram found she'd been able to use clairvoyance on Roswell. Reason being that clairvoyance was a secret Oni art that only functioned when the wavelengths of the caster and target were compatible with each other. Oh, okay, so it's Oni specific, and you need to be compatible. That's why with Rem and Ram, it would work a lot. But with Roswell, now they're on the same wavelength? Why? Given that that's how it worked, it wasn't too hard for someone like Ram to manipulate her own to match that of a wild animal's or demon beast. Oh, she can change it. But when it came to a high-ranked opponent like Roswell, he could easily disrupt her ability to match his wavelength by simply closing himself off to her. What this means is that if Roswell had never truly opened his heart to her, then her clairvoyance never would have worked on him at all. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So the fact that we matched the wavelength, it proves that Roswell does have affection for Ram. It is not just empty words through the book. He does care to a certain degree. That's why Ram had never tried to use it on him before. She was scared of finding out if Roswell ever truly trusted her. Aww. So when the time came for her to finally find an answer to a question she'd always been hiding from, it only made sense that she was happy to see clairvoyance actually work on him, proving once and for all that Roswell did in fact confide in her. Now, wh And why is that? Because... The leading theory for me is that this girl is the tool, the answer for Volcanica. Roswell's goal is to kill the dragon to release the seal that has Echidna, you know, sealed away right now, right? At least the soul. If we kill the dragon that gets uplifted, Tape has mentioned that Ram and peak performance is like, not quite Reinhardt tier, but she could take down the white whale apparently. She could like solo that shit. I think that Ram is an incredibly strong person that Roswell has figured out like for the book of like, I need an answer for the dragon. Here she is. Or <laughs> another crazy shit is what if the next descendant, right? What are we at right now? L, right? A, B, C, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M. Therefore, Roswell M. <laughs> Get it? Roswell M. Mathers will be the child between Roswell L. Mathers and Ram. That child 
will have some crazy fucking powers, right? Select a breeding to make an OP dude that can defeat the drag. I don't know. Maybe. But I, I feel like that is the reason why Ram is important. And the reason, obviously, Subaru is important. Because he got returned by death. And he's like the ultimate pawn Roswell could manipulate up until this point. Points actually work on him. Proving once and for all that Roswell did in fact confide in her. Now, while the initial part of Ram and Roswell's confrontation was pretty much the same, the vow they made with each other could use a little more context. Okay. You see, Ram had pledged unyielding loyalty to Roswell in exchange for his help in getting revenge on the people who destroyed her village. Yeah, but he did that shit, right? But what the anime didn't quite make clear was that it was a limited time arrangement. Ram's subservience to Roswell only needed to continue so long as Roswell still desired the goal that he was chasing after. If there ever came a time when he no longer pursued the objectives given to him by the book, then Roswell had promised to give whatever was left of himself to Ram. Ma oh, remember that episode where Ram was stabbed through, like Garfield and Ram were both penetrated by Roswell, three thumb? Uh, as promised, I devote my soul to you, is what Roswell said, and this is kind of making more sense now. After. If there ever came a time when he no longer pursued the objectives given to him by the book, then Roswell had promised to give whatever was left of himself to Ram. But, okay, in that run where he basically gave up because, shit, there's no point following the book anymore because this soup version of Subaru is too cooked, he killed Ram and Garfield. But what is the, where is that part of, huh, I give myself to you? You killed her. <laughs> Along with Garfield. How is that an example of Roswell devoting his soul to her at that moment? Making it so that if he had ever lost his reason to live, then Ram would be the one who was free to choose what to do with him. That was the terms of their agreement. So, because this was a world divergent from the path outlined in the book, Roswell's objective was no longer attainable. It meant there was only one last thing that Ram needed to do now, and that was destroy the Book of Knowledge. Oh! If she did. Not only would it ensure that she was no longer bounded by the conditions of the vow, but it would also force Roswell to follow through with his part. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. One of the two copies. And Biko's copy is just fraudulent, right? It stopped updating a long time ago. I don't know why. The more I think about it, like, who is giving these, these instructions? Maybe there isn't anybody. Maybe the book is just created to be self-sufficient. But why does Biko stop? I don't know. These books are given by Echidna, though, right? And I feel like Echidna is a great candidate for... Like her to have the original Tomb of Wisdom, and then there's two perfect, near perfect copies made, which is the Grimoires, and then all the other defects are the other Gospels, right? How does this shit keep updating? <laughs> is Echidna giving orders? Does that make sense? <sighs> I don't know, but if we get rid of Roswell's, then only Biko's remains, which is just not updating. Then we're cooked. But maybe that's for the better. Rather than relying on these like future scripts, Right? And being bound to destiny. Why not, like, surpass that shit by getting rid of the books? Basically guaranteeing Subaru and Ram their victory. Now, when Roswell went on to speak about the destruction of Ram's village, there was actually a reason behind him saying that the vow was something Ram was forced into. Forced? And that's because the only other option was death. You see, back when Ram's horn had been cut from her head, it left her body in a state that simply wasn't capable of supporting itself. And then Roswell showed up. Had Roswell not come along and offered his body. Wow, what a, con what, what a coincidence, bro. Isn't that crazy? That this girl with insane potential to slay the dragon was just in this moment where Roswell saved her and just made... Wow, it's just like too perfect timing. Surely he didn't read the book and just fucking do this. ...body to support her own, then Ram would have died in only a matter of days. So, anyone with this knowledge would definitely consider the vow to be something Ram had no choice but to say. Blackmailed! It was a secret she'd been keeping hidden for all this time now. She couldn't remember who exactly it was she was trying to hide it from, but she knew that she wouldn't ever Ram. let that person know about this deal that she made with the devil. Ram, no! As Ram tried to fill in this gap in her memory, Roswell began to praise her for getting so close to achieving her goal. The way she'd used Subaru's plans to interfere with the book's predictions and force him to act was most impressive. But the miscalculation she made was believing that the book's path couldn't be fixed. If Roswell could make the snowfall in Sanctuary, then the conclusion to this world would be the same as the book had predicted. Yep. Thus rendering all other deviations completely meaningless. Anyway, the rest of this scene was pretty much the same. So now we can move on to the events in the mansion. 
prior to what we saw in the anime. There was a bit of lead up showing how Petra found herself wandering the hallways. It was only a mere few hours ago that she was completing the last few tasks given to her as a maid of this residence. She attempted to deliver Beatrice her meal, wiped down the girl she only knew as Rem, then wipe visited down. Frederica to receive- Wipe down? <laughs> Petra just g giving Rem just like- She's just basically bathing her with like, wet towels. Leave her assessment on how she performed her daily work. Once all of that was finished, she returned to her room and went to sleep in preparation for the next day. But it was during that rest that she found herself awoken by a very tense Frederica. The instant Petra realized that things weren't normal, she immediately picked up on a sensation that was very familiar to her. It was an aura she recognized from a harrowing experience that only occurred a few months ago. So that got her in the mindset that this was a dangerous situation, yep. making her ready for whatever orders Frederica was about to give her. The plan was for Petra to leave the mansion through the dining hall and head to the village. But it was as she was making her way there that she suddenly remembered the girl she promised to take care of. That I can respect a lot. Petra was heroic and courageous. She could have just bailed, bro, but she looked at the handkerchief on her wrist. Remember the promise she made with Subaru? And she's like, you know what? I gotta take care of number two. Even though one day I will surpass number two. Rem right now is number two. I'll show the respect. Leading us to where we started in the anime. After Petra encountered Elsa and failed at finding Beatrice, her next scene with Subaru actually began with the confirmation of their promise. I'm not exactly sure why they didn't include Subaru's own tattered version of the handkerchief, but- That's right, the whole handkerchief white thing is, uh, it's like a good luck charm and you're supposed to go on a journey and then you come back and it's obviously gonna get dirty because like, it's, it's like a very like white and then if you return with it, then it's just like, I don't know, like thematically the handkerchief like saved you, it like protected you, and you like return it, it's like a good thing. But the first thing Subaru did was show her that he'd kept it the entire time. Okay. It was that in combination with his gentle word. <laughs> Motherfucker breaks so many promises, but this is the one thing he didn't break for Petra. <laughs> Usually, because like Subaru and breaking promises is like very, very common in this show, but hey, he kept it. Time. It was that in combination with his gentle words that helped Petra to calm herself. As for Frederica, the difference in strength between herself and Elsa was made apparent right from the get-go. Elsa was easily reading her dodges then following it up with ranged attacks that were sure to hit, resulting in Frederica taking several iron skewers to the arm. Yeah, I don't really remember these like fucking... Uh, it's not a kunai. During, like, the Zabuza arc in Naruto, they started to use these, like, needles, right? I forgot that Elsa even used these things, but, like, goddamn. Zembon, yeah. Fatal. Each attack did work to reduce her endurance little by little. So, it was clear that Elsa was just toying with her until the opportunity came where she could slice her stomach. Luckily for her, this was also the very reason why she was able to stay alive. Elsa is too prideful. Right? She's playing with her food. She intentionally goes through the bowels. And all that does is give Frederica more opportunities to get back, right? And she's toying with their food. She's toying with their food and she's very intentional with how she j just goes for the belly. Like, that pride is going to be that downfall. And it also gave her one single chance for a counterattack. What Frederica- Also, another thing is, okay. <laughs> this show is so fucking troll, man. It's like, I thought it all made sense how Frederica could leave the barrier. Quarter blood, different fathers. Mom is hoeing around. Hey, nothing wrong with that. Okay, quarter blood. So then you would think that her transform state of like uh, the lioness is it's obviously smaller than Garfield's, right? So then I'm like, oh, that's why like Frederica's beast form is like less potent or smaller or like quote unquote weaker than Garfield. While Garfield must be half blood because he can't leave right. And that's why he's so big and he doesn't need to rely on that crystal thing to give it extra mana to transform. No, none of that shit mattered. Garfield also fucking quarter blood. It's so troll. It did was she turned her legs into their beast form, then kept them hidden under her dress. Oh. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Uh fucking what's it called? Now we can it's, it's simple. We just do a misogynistic take. Man better than woman. <laughs> Therefore, Garfield bigger, stronger than Frederica form, even though both quarter blood. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Allowing her to surprise Elsa with a massive burst of speed far beyond what her human form was capable of, as she accelerated to a velocity faster than the wind. Wait, what? Speed form? Hidden under her dress, 
allowing her to surprise Elsa with a massive burst of speed far beyond what her human form was capable of. Okay, okay, okay. As she accelerated to a velocity faster than the wind, her goal was to claw out Elsa's vitals, or at least strike any part of her body that she- Man, you know what's gonna be so fucking ironic? Like, like, I don't know if Elsa's gonna actually die today or like uh in this arc if she is it is what it is right but like she will clearly lose this arc it would be so hilarious if someone cuts her belly up wouldn't that be like one of the most ironic just ending for elsa a woman who is known as the bowel hunter gets her bowels hunted she could but the moment she was supposed to make contact the woman that was just there had completely vanished she was neither in front nor behind anymore leaving the only place left to check the ceiling. The instant Frederica looked up, Elsa began to jump around from ceiling to wall much like how she did when she was facing Reinhardt. But as good as Frederica was at tracking rapid motions such as this, there was nothing she could do to follow where Elsa was- God, I forgot how amazing Arc 1 was, man. I think a lot of people are sleeping on Arc 1 because it's like a very- it's like a little baby intro arc, right? But it was very concise. In episode 3, I, I, I still feel like Reinhardt versus Elsa is still one of the best moments of ReZero for me. Like the perfect type of power fantasy to get the audience hooked on from the start. It's going. All she could make out were the fading shadows and after images of where Elsa used to be. As Elsa dove in for what Frederica knew was the decisive attack, that's when Garfield stepped in to save her. Here we go! Bringing us to the final moments of the episode. The reunion between the siblings and then Garfield calls Frederica Aniki. Instead of Aniki, which is the way that you would refer to big bro, like in like a fucking like Yakuza setting or something, right? Instead of Nissan, you say Nissan, right? Sister, Aniki. <laughs> And that's it! Now, while the fight does continue on from here, All it right. relates to stuff that will likely be included next episode. Yes, sir! Um, I wanted to know a little bit more about, uh... I don't know, just like the Garfield stuff, I guess, but it, at the end of the day, Mom fucked two separate, uh, half-blood demi-humans. Therefore, Frederica and Garfield are both quarter-blood. During the episode, it's just like, what are you trying to hint at right now? Like, clearly that means that if you can pass, that you're not actually half-blood, but it, it is that simple. The grimoire, right? It's just like telling us to do it. So like Roswell is fucking being cheap. I don't know if this is a third day, but he's trying to make it fucking snow. So that's these, you know, the rabbit will show up. And if that happens, I don't know. But like if we somehow end up subjugating the great rabbit in this arc too, after we save the mansion, because like Roswell, I don't know. We'll have to see how this shit concludes within the next like four episodes. But this is looking like a really hype finale coming up. Please go give Mr. Annie News a like on the video. Here's the link. Here it is. And I will see you guys next time.